Okay, well, welcome back to Inside Japan, our roundtable discussion. Last time we talked about driving, getting your driver's, li- driver's license, but now we're actually going to talk about the actual driving in Japan and your actual experiences. And for me, it's actually, I'm guessing, the opposite of what you experienced because I'm from Los Angeles and yeah, drivers are horrible there, <laughs> to be honest. Everyone's always just like, me first. No. Like, there's no one for one, like there is in Japan. Um, people over here, for me, were just like really nice and generous. And so, yeah, coming from Los Angeles, that's fine. But then, yet yeah, I also stayed, spent some time in Virginia. And Virginia, it was not that they were mean, it's just they were just bad at driving (laughs) like it's like I'm I'm trying to get in like it's like okay this is the fast lane why are you trying to match the speed of the person next to you why why Why? (laughs) so coming from that those two experiences coming to to know me I was like oh man I love the drivers here and people are like are you crazy (laughs) these are like the worst drivers in Japan I'm like <laughs> so now it's my mine's not a rant, it's more like I had a good experience coming from a bad background. <laughs> In Kenya people drive bad. Okay. Really, really bad. We're lucky to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean really bad. There's zero courtesy. So initially when I came to Japan, I loved People will stop and let you in. People, people are really courteous, but that's where it stops. <laughs> they are courteous. That doesn't make you a good driver. <laughs> they stop without warning. They stop, start turning, and then turn on the indicator. <laughs> it's, there's lots of bad stuff that goes on that gets under my skin. But they are cutters. Yeah. And I'll give you that. They, they, they really are cutters. Yeah. How was your experience? Well, I would differ with you on, on the courteous part of you. Um, <laughs> maybe it's because I guess I've not been lucky enough to experience it, but I find it really, really strange, really upsetting that you're stuck in a situation, you know, you've entered into the wrong street, and you can turn back. And these people are seeing that you're, you're in a situation, but you know, they'll still keep going and still keep going and keep going. You'll very, I'll really have that situation where like some people actually stop and say, right, let's be courteous, let's let this guy back up and then go. You want to take a turn? It's a red light, but still, you know, they want to still come back, block, and they'll give you that small space to pass by. So I find the courteous part of it, but you know, one bad, one rotten apple doesn't give them all a bad name, but most of my experiences have not been so courteous or great that I'd like to talk about that. But I, what I like about driving is, honestly, I like the fact that everybody obeys, well, most of the times obeys the rules. That's something that I like. Coming from Kenya, where <laughs> we don't have rules, we have the rules, but we hardly, hardly, nobody follows them. It's a big change to actually follow them. So that's a good thing that I like about you. Eric's quiet. <laughs> I think he's had some nasty experiences. <laughs> Let loose. <laughs> well, so I, I grew up in the Midwest, um, so not so heavily populated. And I wouldn't say that people were wonderful drivers, but my impression was is that if you drive a little too fast, the, you see the sirens and you get a speeding ticket. like. People know that if you kind of go nuts on the road, you're going to get stopped. But over the last decade, you know, I've seen some stuff that is unbelievable. You know, I'm I'm at a I'm at a red light, and there's you know I'm in the left lane. There's a car next to me. We're waiting for the red light. Cars are going like this. The car next to me drives into oncoming traffic. The car comes, he comes forward. The next car goes, he comes forward. That car goes, he's playing Frogger through an intersection. (laughs) And I'm like, 
how can you not wait 45 seconds? Like, why is this your choice? There's the people, okay, you're coming to a red light. Well, they're going to go into the turn lane and shoot right past you. Like, okay, we're going to sling, slingshot past you through a red light. There are the people who just honk and drive through red lights. I mean, I only see stuff like this once a month or less, but the fact that there are so few police on the road, people, the 99% who are good drivers and the other fraction feel like they can get away with murder. You know, I, I remember driving down the road and this guy on a motorcycle doing a wheelie for like a <laughs> kilometer. Like, I don't know if that's legal, but it doesn't look very safe. But at least it looked cool, right? It did look kind of <laughs> cool. You, you mentioned one thing that is true. Especially, well, it, Utsunomiya is not a big city. It's half a million people. So uh, we are not a big metropolis. But being out here, there are very few police. It's amazing how few police. I can go a week without seeing a police spotted on the road. And, and that, on the road, specifically, in the stations. Oh, yeah, in the stations. <laughs> you know, and where you need to be careful for police is you see one policeman standing here. He's got his friend 200 <laughs> meters down. He's going to, okay, there's a guy on this phone. And then you go by and the friend pops out. Stop. Yeah. My friend saw you on the phone. Yeah. Or you, you know, this was a right turn only. So they have revenue making they, they police traps on very minor infractions i see every day mothers driving strapped in and their child standing at the front oh, yeah, that, that i freaks that me all out the, and, and the cops don't do anything that freaks me out all the time i i feel like stopping the mother and ask her why do you have a seatbelt and what do you think will happen to this little person <laughs> when, when the car stops, when the seatbelt stops you and this one, what, what happens to this little one? But the police never stopped that. For me, the biggest thing was the first um, change in terms of traffic lights. Whereas here in Japan, you've got these little, the green arrows just below the traffic light. Right. I had never experienced that before. So, you know, I'm looking at a red light and I need to stop. But then I'm also looking at a green arrow. And you know, it's just conveniently just beneath the red light. So, you know, what's these, am I supposed to go? Am I supposed to stop? And you've got green. So these were kind of things that I first initially got used to, you know, right. trying to get used to even now as well sometimes. Because they're confusing. On one path, like you have two or three of them at the same time, you know, like, yeah, you can go straight and you can also turn left, or you can. So that was something that was new, but eventually got over it, that was nice. Um, what else? Roads here in the Tsunomiya, particularly because it's a countryside, are very narrow. Right. So just be careful when you're driving around. You may not, you know, get the courtesy from the other driver, but it helps if you show it. You know, obviously if you've got a big truck or a van coming onward, give space. You know, just avoid these unnecessary road bridges and stuff like. Give space. Let them pass through. Um, and you'll be okay to drive. One thing I really uh, thought was interesting, coming from the Midwest, you have you know wide lanes. You also have an easement or side of the road to pull over if you have a problem. You know, so there's the lane, side of the road, and then it goes off into nothingness. But in Japan, with narrow roads, you've got two tight lanes and then a drop off into a rice field. <laughs> there is no margin of error. And what's even better, you know, it is illegal to talk on your phone. So if someone gets a phone call, they're going to pull to the left side of the lane and stop in the middle of the road with their flashers on, talking on the phone call or checking their phone. So then everybody has to like, make this work, work. I, that is so not adding to the safety on the road. Um, but that I is... hate, and I've seen that and I've experienced it right in front of me. We're on the go, the traffic lights turn green. Come on, move. And all of a sudden, blink this, come on, guys on the phone. Are you serious? 
I've never serious? experienced that you stuff. Never? You never? Not the stuff. Oh, it it happens all the time. This is why I'm having good experiences. It I'm like, happens all the time. No, not, not the cell, not the cell phone thing. Never. Oh never man, seen. all the time, and it doesn't matter. It could be rush hour, any time. Somebody just stops and blinks on on his phone. I've I never experienced that. I've experienced more yeah. than that. And they cause humongous traffic jams. No. The the only thing that I've experienced is like I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm 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 pretty sure I'm barely gonna make this light. If not, it's like maybe illegal. Me crossing this light yeah. just turned red. I'm like, oh. then look in my rear view mirror, three cars are behind me. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I've seen that, yeah. So what? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. that happens all the time. Yeah. And so I got used to that after a while. I'm like, okay. I'm like I, I I was just borderline, but the three <laughs> yeah. Well, it's three. It's, it's, it's multi nine. Don't waste that time between signals. Use yeah. it up. I would say that's the biggest difference between the uh, signals in America and Japan. There's actually like a second delay, like where all of them are red. Yeah. For like one second in America, it's just like green, red, green, red. You know, just switches. Yeah, they give. There is a, a delay to let all the crazies pass. Yeah. So, I think a lot of people take advantage of that. <laughs> the one that, one of my biggest pet peeves is people who will, almost always, it's older drivers, and they'll be coming out of a convenience store, and they see you coming, and they just pull out yeah. real slowly, <laughs> really slowly. And when they get in, they don't accelerate. They just kind of go Keep slowly. The same pace. And just as they start to build up speed, they indicate to turn off again. <laughs> and I, at that point, I lose it. <laughs> you could have let me pass before you pulled all that drama. Yeah. You know, it goes without saying. Sometimes you're on the road and, okay, you've either got a kid in the car or doing something, your attention gets distracted. You, just, you may sort of like veer off off the road for just a couple of seconds, right? But you're in your sense, I'm not talking about you being drunk and driving, no. But you may have caused somebody some inconvenience and they hooted you. Out of courtesy, you apologize. You know, you raise your hand like, you know, something like that, sorry, or say something. But here, I've had people move from their lane, almost back my car. And when I hooted, they go back and like, just, I'd be like, and I look at them, like just you know, stone cold, just like, you know, the least you could do is just acknowledge that you've caused me inconvenience and just like, you know, okay, I'm not expecting you to leave your steering wheel and, you know, join your hands and ask for forgiveness, but you know, just acknowledge that, you know, you've made a mistake. Here, I have. So, but seriously, I mean, is, is, that, is that asking okay. too much? Like, no. seriously? Uh, I, I was sitting in a parking lot in a parked car, eating my lunch, sitting in my car, and boom, someone, someone hit my car while I'm sitting in my car and I step out and there's a, a frazzled looking man in his 70s or mid 80s and he just kind of looks like confused, glassy eyed and then he just drives off. Like, I can see the white of his car on my car. Like there was no acknowledgement, no apology. like. I, I don't know if he was uh, intimidated by me being foreign or just like there is a large elderly population in Japan and uh, as that trend continues driving in Japan gets a bit more dicey. I don't know if any of you have ever been involved in an accident where the police actually come. No. I got that's why we have gold licenses. We're gold. <laughs> I got I got hit by somebody who just kind of cut across lanes and bumped into me. And when the police came, they asked her, did, "Did you look?" And she admitted, "No, I didn't look." And the police said, "Okay," and wrote it all up. But evidently, in Japan, unless you are not moving, if you are not moving then it's 100% the other person's fault. But if you are in motion, it is partly yeah. your fault. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. So, so they said it was 90% her fault 
and 10% my fault. And I had a big argument with the insurance company. I said, I'm not signing. It's not, it's 0% my fault. And he explained, he came with a big book that shows all the different scenarios and what percentage is allotted to each person. And finally, I had to accept that, okay, 10 because they will not pay me yeah. out. But it's 10% my fault, which means I must pay for 10% of her damage. Her 10% was much more than the 90% she was paying me. And I was like, dude, how can this be fair? I still have to pay. And she's the one who hit me, and she admitted it. But that's the rule in Japan. Yeah. That so I heard a story last week from a, from a <clears throat> student saying that, okay, you know, he's turning, the light's turning red, so he stops, it's at the edge of the intersection, and someone rides their bicycle into his side of his car. He's broadsided, and he's not moving, but his car is in drive, so he's at fault. If he had gone from drive to park, if he was parked, he would not have been responsible. But the fact that his car was in drive made him responsible. So, be careful. I heard something, I heard a, a story whereby, I just couldn't believe it, I still don't, but this was on a highway where a head-on collision took place. Unfortunately, there was, there was one fatality involved, but when the insurances were arguing that and the police came in, the vehicle, oncoming vehicle that crossed over and hit into this guy, obviously, 100% at fault. But this guy had to take part of the blame, and he was told that why did you not make an attempt at dodging or moving? And like, we're at the high, we're on a highway, designated lanes, a speed lane, you're expecting me to take an initiative when I don't know where this car is coming from me? Yeah, I can try, but you know, I'm gonna go off the road. I mean, I'm. you expect me to go off that is the thinking behind the allocating of responsibility. It's supposed to encourage you to take evasive action. Come on. Which is all, anyway, that's just the ridiculous nature of the whole situation. That you could be at fault because you did not try to evade the other car. Has anybody experienced road rage? In Japan? Road rage at you? Yes, of course. Somebody being, uh, no, I've not, not had, I've, oh, I've, I've, I've had once on a motorbike. One, one time, I think, like, someone was, like, honking at me, and then I was getting ready to get out of my car, and then the person just drove off. <laughs> <laughs> I had once when I was riding on a little scooter, and this dude felt that I should get off the road, and he was really on, on the honk. And we came to traffic lights. And the scooter is really small. And I think he assumed the scooter is small, the rider must be small. <laughs> when, when, when we came to the traffic lights, we stopped and he, he came out of his car. And I saw him in my rear view mirror that he's coming. And so I put my bike on the stand and I got up. <laughs> and I just passed him. <laughs> and he just looked at me and when I opened the helmet and he saw, oh my god. <laughs> it's just, Sap. <laughs> he just said, take care, just get there, just take care. And he went back to his car and got it. <laughs> and that was it. I was like, okay. But that that's about all that I've had. Just this guy, like, I was waiting for the cars to pass by. It's like one of those small, tiny streets and it was two ways. And I was about to make a right-hand turn, but I was waiting for, like, the cars to pass by first, you know, because there was, like, a, there was, like, a light pole or something like that. So to get out in the middle, it would be just weird. So I just waited for the cars, and the guy was, like, honking at me, and I was getting ready to get out of my car and everything, and, yeah. Like, I was like, oh, I really want to get out of my car right now, because, yeah, I'm, like, waiting for these cars people to come and it's like but if I open my door I might hit another car that's coming <laughs> and so yeah and so I just drove made my turn that guy just like sped off and I was like oh. but, it, but it's been in the news of late quite a bit of road it seems it's quite rampant it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's on the increase it's on the increase that's why I asked the question because 
I watched a couple of videos on YouTube and um, actually pedestrian safety as well. I have experiences where where our uh, where my workplace is we've got this huge it's it's a large zebra crossing and um, to get to the station we obviously need to cross this so there's many people crossing over this crossing and um, you would think because it's the busiest one all the cars will stop but sometimes you find people just zooming across so you've already crossed half of it and once okay. you're on it you're in the middle you're in the middle it's your right of way to cross over but you've got to stop and make sure these guys pass because you're going to get of course, if you do get killed for it, at least you know your family's lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the insurance money you get from that you're, is you're like just you're just scared to cross. Walk. They will. They, no one will hit you. Dude, they, they I can't afford it. <laughs> no one will hit you. Is it? They can't afford it. I heard that. that they will stop and fume. They will. Yeah, but no one will hit you. In 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 most countries, if pedestrians are on the pedestrian crossing. They have right of way, cars must stop. In Japan, it's not that way. Mm. They, they, oh, it is that way, but nobody follows that way. So they just keep driving. And so pedestrians wait for cars to move. But a lot of people have learned that, oh, I have the right of way, and just keep walking. No car will reach you. Yeah, actually, um, what was it? Two weeks ago, I think, I saw on the news, at, like the Tochigi news, that Utenomia police were actually looking for people, like giving tickets to people who didn't stop mm. for pedestrians. Yeah, so they're actually, they were actually doing their job. <laughs> you are supposed to stop, but they don't. But that, that one outside the office, I, I just walk across. You when I hit me, hit me. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm overdue for a payday. <laughs> <laughs> because if they hit you, right. it is. It's about as serious as Shut up, killing me. It's about as serious as it gets. Like, yeah. I, I was actually riding my bicycle one time, and I was late for work, and I didn't know about any of this stuff. It was like my first year here, and um, I was able to still maintain control. Like the car hit the back of my tire while, while I was riding my bicycle, but I was still able to make, maintain control. I, like, I stopped, looked back, and the lady was just scared, and I was like, "I'm running late. I'm just gonna go." And I'm like. Man, if I would have known that, I'd probably like fell over. Oh no! <laughs> Put a new addition in your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and and so yeah, that I you know, but not I didn't blame the person. Like for me, it was like no damage, you know, mm. nothing, you know. So I didn't find it, you know, good no to like, cause more trouble. What What upsets me often when driving in Japan is you, especially in Tsunami. I don't find it as much in Tokyo. Tokyo has lots of police, lots of everything. But in Utsunomiya, you'll find sometimes a traffic jam. And you will be in this jam for a good 10 minutes. And when you get to the front, there's nothing. <laughs> like, so why, why, what was the holdup about? And that's it, there's just nothing. And you leave the jam and there's just, there was nothing. <laughs> and that happens all the time. It's probably just a phone call. <laughs> It got me so upset, and that's what turned me to riding motorbikes. It's this un un <laughs> unnecessary traffic jams. I'm sorry, just like from being from Los Angeles, like ten minutes to traffic jam, <laughs> no. child's play. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago. <laughs> so I had this experience once where I left home. <clears throat> this is about two weeks ago, and this one particular route that I drive, straight road, and you can see the road gradually going. You know, it's climbing up there. So, from a distance, if there was a traffic buildup, you'd be able to see this traffic buildup. And on this particular day, I did see this traffic buildup. So, I was sorry for these guys. I'm like, geez, man, these guys are probably going to get led to work. Um, but I wanted to, to, to find out what the commotion, what this traffic jam up, you know, is about. So, as I approached the traffic line, what I noticed is there's this guy in a van and he's fallen asleep at the traffic line literally just at the traffic light and I was like lucky for this guy that his car had this automatic you know cut off ignition thing um, because just at the intersection he's, he's stopped and he's you know his arms folded and he's asleep and all these cars are overtaking him one by one such a big jam because once I passed him that traffic line 
was long. It was long, and I was like, Shit, these guys are weak. The car up ahead, me, eventually pulled over. Cop station must have gone in and said, hey, you know, this guy sleep at uh, the traffic lights. But, I mean, is this a common thing? Do you find people who sleep at traffic lights? Is this trying to say that people in Japan are really overworked? That, you know, even on their way to work, they fall asleep at the traffic lights? For me, it was a first time experience. I found it funny, but I found it um, like, scary as well to fall asleep at the traffic lights. It's, it's not as uncommon as you would imagine. They do work hard, and it happens more than it should. But it, it is it is bad. It is, it, but it does happen. I've heard a lot of people saying that they are. The amount of work they do is enough for two people. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely have some some guys who who work Monday through Friday, often work on Saturdays. So Sunday they don't actually have time to do anything. They simply do the housework, do some cooking for next week, and recharge the batteries, and then back to the grind. So, yeah, it, 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 it happens. But all in all, I would say driving in Japan is it is pleasant. It is fairly pleasant. If you live in a smaller town like we do in Utsunomiya, in the downtown area, it it can get a little frustrating. There's and there's a ton of traffic lights to navigate. Uh, a, a, a route that should otherwise take 10 minutes can take 20 minutes just because of how many traffic lights you've got to go through. And that's assuming you have clear weather. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if, it's, if it's snowing, just stay home. Yeah. But or walk to the place because that's, that's going to be faster. You, you get that. All about <laughs> faster. But ultimately, it is fairly pleasant driving when you're in Japan. I wouldn't say it's bad. For the average driver, it's 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 really a lot of fun. It's a pleasant place to drive. I would agree on that. Me too. That's probably a good place to end this now. So thank you very much for sharing all of your stories, and thank you to the viewers for watching. We hope you enjoyed this roundtable discussion. Maybe one day we might actually get a roundtable. Who knows? <laughs> but um, thank you very much for watching. If you want to watch more of our videos, you can still watch us on this YouTube channel, or you can follow us on Twitter and ask us questions, leave comments, and we will hopefully get back to you. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.